What's going on? My name's Jay, and today we're going to be diving into Power Director 17 Ultra. I'm going to tell you what I like, what I don't like, who this is for, and ultimately whether or not I recommend it as your next video editor. Let's take a look. A few weeks ago, the folks at Cyberlink sent me an email asking me to review Power Director 17 Ultra, which they boast as the world's fastest video editor, which obviously I had to see for myself. So I said, sure, why not send it over? Send me all this stuff. I'll take a look. So in the spirit of transparency, yes, I did receive access to Power Director 17 Ultra for free, but they're not paying me for the review. So as always, my opinions in this video are my own and honest. Also, if you at any point want to check out Power Director for yourself, there is a link in the description. Make sure to click on that, check it out, download it, do whatever you want to do. Okay, let's get into the review. First, I want to address the speed. Power Director 17 Ultra is fast, like really fast, like ridiculously fast. Like they went plaid. Did you, did you get the reference? Let me know. The time it took to start up PowerDirector 17 and actually start editing was so super, super short. And speaking of startup, one of the other things that I really like about PowerDirector 17 are the options that you get on startup. First of all, there's the resolution settings. Right there on the startup screen, you can choose between a 16.9 video, which is what you're watching right now, or a 4.3 video, which I'm not sure why that's still a thing, but you know, whatever. And you can even do a 9 by 16 video if you want to do something for Instagram or IGTV or Snapchat, if that's still a thing. Also on the startup screen, you can choose whether to go directly into your timeline to start editing or into storyboard mode, which kind of takes everything that would be on your main timeline and actually puts it into something that looks exactly like a storyboard that you would draw out. And they even have slideshow mode where you can make, you guessed it, slideshow. They also have something called auto mode in which PowerDirector basically creates the video for you based off of a template or 360 video editing. Personally, I'd pretty much just work in the timeline mode, but I can see the benefit of storyboard mode and if I ever get a 360 camera, well, you know. Another thing that I really like about PowerDirector 17 Ultra is something that they call shadow files. When you first import media, PowerDirector will alert you if your videos have the potential to slow PowerDirector down or slow your computer down, and they'll offer to make what are called shadow files, which are essentially the same thing as proxies in Premiere Pro or optimized media in DaVinci Resolve. Unfortunately, I tested this feature out before I started recording, and it's now kind of set to do that automatically, so I wasn't able to get a screen recording of that happening. But between the three softwares that I just mentioned, creating some kind of proxy file to make editing faster and smoother, yeah, PowerDirector definitely wins that one. Moving on, like I said, I would primarily only work in the timeline because that's just how I operate. And judging by what I know from you, the viewer, you're pretty much the same way. And the timeline in PowerDirector is actually more like Filmora than it is DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro. Instead of having all of your video tracks on top, all of your audio tracks on bottom, it's actually staggered. So you get a video clip, an audio clip, an effects clip, and then another video video clip and another audio clip and then another effects clip and you get the idea and then down at the bottom you have tracks for titles and voiceovers and eventually music. Personally, I like the way that Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve have their timeline set up. I just find it easier to move around, a, a more flexible, and it just, it works more in line with the way my brain works. But that being said, I know a lot of people who use things like PowerDirector or Filmora with that kind of staggered timeline, and they make some great videos. So this is more of a personal preference than a, like, this is actually a hangup. One other thing to keep in mind is that unlike DaVinci or Premiere, where whatever is in the top track is what you're seeing on the screen, with PowerDirector, it's the opposite. It's whatever is on the the bottom track is what's going to be seen on the screen. That actually took me a little bit to get used to when I was first playing around with PowerDirector. The rest of the layout is pretty straightforward. You have your media pool that keeps all of your audio clips, your video clips, your graphics, and all that stuff. And you also have your monitor where you can review either individual clips or your entire timeline. And the media pool is actually something that I really liked in PowerDirector 17. Instead of having to go through and create folders or bins and organizing your footage, it actually automatically 
organizes your footage by whether it's an audio clip, a video clip, or an image. It's not quite the level of organization that I'm used to, but the fact that they do that automatically can potentially save you a whole bunch of time. When it comes to actually editing your footage, I really, again, enjoyed how fast everything was. PowerDirector has some really cool tools to make editing your clips simple, namely pre-cut, which allows you to make a either a single cut in your footage and put it in your timeline, or multiple cuts, setting in and out points and putting it into your timeline. They also have this really cool tool called Content Aware, which utilizes PowerDirector's AI to cut your footage based on the audio waveform. And then all you have to do is go through and choose which cuts to keep and which ones to discard. Now, while those are all really cool tools and they can assist you in editing your clips, there was one big turnoff, which was that I couldn't hear the audio while I was scrubbing through the video frame by frame, which made it really hard to make those precise cuts that I typically make in my videos. Moving on, at first I was a little disappointed at PowerDirector's lack of audio editing tools. The only thing that was readily available upon first glance was a basic audio mixer. Luckily, after doing some searching and watching some tutorials on YouTube, I was actually able to find a more robust audio editor within PowerDirector it has compressor and EQ and all this stuff you would need in order to get pretty decent sounding dialogue. Now this is not a full featured DAW. It's not a full featured audio editor. If you want that, you're going to have to edit in another app. Audio Director from Cyberlink is one of those options, but it's gonna cost you about 130 bucks. Okay, let's talk color grading. I have to say that I was a little bit disappointed in PowerDirector's color grading options. I mean, yes, you do get some nice tools like color correcting, white balance, and even color match, and you can put LUTs on top of your footage. But if you want full manual control over your color grading, you're gonna have to go somewhere else, like maybe Color Director, also from Cyberlink, and another $130. Other things to note about PowerDirector 17 Ultra are the pre installed transitions, special effects, and titles, as well as the ability to add subtitles to your video right from within the app. They also have an extensive library where you can purchase more packs with more transitions and more effects. A lot of the pre installed ones were a little bit gimmicky for my taste but uh, some of them were pretty cool. Also, the effects that are included in PowerDirector 17 don't seem to be too GPU heavy, which is super nice. Okay, let's talk about who PowerDirector 17 Ultra is for. And after playing around with it for a few weeks, I can safely say that if you're making YouTube videos and you don't really care about having like full, full manual control over your audio and over your color grading, PowerDirector 17 would be an amazing option for you. It's super fast, it's lightweight, it's got a lot of really cool features. I would would even go as far to say that if you're doing slightly more professional work, like maybe short form videos for clients that are gonna get put on the internet, then this could work really well for you. However, if you're gonna do more long form stuff like TV shows, music videos, commercials, I probably wouldn't recommend PowerDirector 17 Ultra because of the lack of flexibility, the lack of control unless you wanted to go the route of getting PowerDirector 17 Ultra, Color Director, and Audio Director. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can either get a subscription to Director Suite 365, which includes all three of those apps, plus Photo Director, and that costs $30 a month, or right now they're running a special for a yearly subscription for $90 or you can buy all three apps outright for $390. Now, the good news about that is you won't be making monthly payments. The bad news about that is for $90 less, you could get DaVinci Resolve Studio, which has a lot more features, a lot more flexibility, but it does have a much steeper learning curve than PowerDirector 17. That's, a, that's something I totally forgot to mention. The learning curve on PowerDirector 17 is actually really, really small. You can kind of dive in and just go and start making videos right away. There's, there are tutorials out there, but you, you can figure a lot of stuff out yourself really easily. By the way, I've got a playlist with a bunch of information on how to make better videos, no matter what editor you're using. And if you want to check that out, it's linked right up here. And right down here, you'll find a video that YouTube thinks you should watch. And if you want to learn more about video editing, camera gear, and how to make better videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Cool? Cool. I'll talk to you later.